Good day, I'm Sam and welcome back to Real World Rides. Uh, today we're going to look at a car that is, uh, well, quintessentially British and, um, well, it's a car that uh, ticks a lot of boxes for a lot of people. For instance, as a, a baronet, I could have bought this car to uh, survey my uh, English country estate and uh, the several thousand acres of uh, land I have inherited in Scotland uh, and is uh, grouse more. Or I could have bought this car, you know, because I'm a right geezer. I've done all right in the old trade, if you know what I mean. And I'm off down the docks to sell my latest consignment. Or I could be a Cheshire housewife married to a footballer, a traffic policeman, or a solicitor. Well, what I'm getting at is this car is a car that, if you're anyone who's anyone, would have had one. Yes, of course, it's the Range Rover. Ah, oh, yes, the Range Rover. And more specifically, the P38 Range Rover, which is the second generation, uh, made from, I think, about 1994 to 2002, uh, of which I've got this example here. Um, and I'm going to show you in the following video why I think they're such a good buy, uh, and more specifically, why I think these have been overlooked uh, in favour of the classic, which is the Range Rover that went before this. Don't you think, Barney? I do. Just look at that. The typical Range Rover in front of an English country cottage. It just looks so right, doesn't it? But this, it's a car that would also look right in front of a Hollywood movie lot, in front of a, a big country estate, in the city, in Westminster, or on the streets of New York, LA, anywhere. Um, they've just become a, a timeless design. And I think they've only got better with age. And the P38 that you see here, uh, this is a 2001 car uh, in Bordeaux red. Uh, it's just a fabulous looking car and I just think these have aged so well. I think when these first came out, I remember Jeremy Clarkson saying that uh, they look like a metro cab, which was rather unfair, uh, albeit slightly true. But even he conceded that there's just something about them and uh, he actually grew to love the p38 in its in its own way so the reason i think these are uh, the cars to buy is because like many cars that are sort of in the doldrums of sort of between scrap and collectability they're from sort of 15 to 20 25 years old now and inevitably a lot of these cars are horrible they've just gone into the wrong hands uh, they've been neglected the air suspension is on its knees and you're just left with sort of a collection of scrap metal and when that's a Land Rover comprised of scrap metal that's even worse than anything else so I'm going to show you uh, what to look for on on these cars and also just why they seem to have come full circle and in my view are now an appreciating classic so one thing to point out, this is uh, what's known as the Bordeaux, a limited edition, uh, hence the red carpeting, uh, which only a Range Rover or a Bentley can really carry off with panache. Uh, and it looks expertly modelled here by Barney, the flat-coated retriever. Inside you get lashings of uh, light-coloured uh, ivory leather, uh, which I think in Land Rover parlance is known as Lightstone. Uh, I couldn't help uh, but adding a Fortnum and Mason hamper uh, to my example, which I think just looks period correct. Uh, you also get further red carpeting in all the footwells and these lovely uh, leather uh, covered door cards. And I have to say, these have aged really well. I mean, this it helps that this one is a really nice example. It's not been abused and trashed. Uh, the only thing which these do suffer from is the dreaded headlining uh, sags. So it looks like sl slightly like a Moroccan souk at the moment, but uh, that will be sorted soon uh, by my upholsterer. Taking a look inside, uh, as you can see, uh, more luxury in the front. I've left my consignment of uh, illicit uh, drugs in on the passenger seat from when I was pretending to be a drug dealer earlier. 
but overall these are just a really nice place to spend time i mean they are a bit plasticky they did lose something in the second generation i mean look at this horrible uh, plastic dashboard which when they've gone to the effort of trimming the seats and the door cards in beautiful leather uh, they've really let the side down with the dashboard but other than that i still think these are really rather classy So a little bit of history about the P38. Well, the first generation uh, Range Rover, I think was released in about, or the prototype was released in about 1970, 1971. And um, that was obviously the iconic uh, Range Rover. It's you know very well known. It's sort of still to this day, very recognizable. And that had a hugely long production run. Um, I think they started off as a three door initially, and then obviously the five door uh, became more popular. Uh, and I think they were produced right up until about 1994. And when this uh, generation Range Rover came out uh, later that year, um, it obviously had a quite a tough act to follow. Now, uh, the reason it's called a P38, incidentally, is uh, after the office building in Solihull, uh, where it was conceived. Um, so not the most impressive of starts, but nonetheless, uh, and obviously it didn't live anywhere near as long as its predecessor. Um, but there are still a lot of these about. You can still buy them quite cheaply, um, but they do vary hugely in price. Um, and if you're looking at one of these, my advice would be to um, buy the best you can find. And that's generally my advice with, with any example of any, any car. Uh, I just think buying anything cheap as a doer-upper is always a false economy. Um, so yes, these had a, a six or seven year production run. Um, so there's a few of them about, but they, they're noticeably thinner on the ground now than they were even, even five years ago. So I think for that reason alone, um, and the fact that the values of the classic are so high in comparison, uh, would make this you know just a very good, good buy, providing you get the right car. And they came with a variety of engines. Uh, this is the uh, ill-fated diesel. Uh, now I say that quietly in hushed tones because it's not the most popular engine uh, for a P38 but and I will admit they are very underpowered but uh, you're talking uh, gallons per mile whatever you choose whether that's the 4.6 petrol uh, or gasoline for you guys in the States uh, they also do a 4 litre petrol uh, and then there's this which is the 2.5 litre oil burner um, which is actually a, a six-cylinder BMW engine so it's actually not a bad engine but in the Range Rover they are just very very underpowered um, but you can chip them uh, and that does improve performance but in my opinion uh, whatever P38 you buy uh, whether that's a 4.6 or, or a diesel the performance isn't amazing and uh, I had a 4.6 quite recently and I chose to keep I chose to keep this one because uh, the 4.6 as nice as the engine is and it sounds good which is it's probably its best uh, virtue but it's still uh, it just wasn't in the same condition that the car you see in front of me is in and this is a lovely 80,000 miler uh, and actually this this car that you see here is uh, also a one owner car so it's had one owner from brand new and uh, as I say that's quite unusual and I bought it directly off off him about six months ago. So a quick look at some of the styling features of the uh, P38. Now you'll notice a lot of the visual cues of earlier Range Rovers were carried on. Um, if you look at the bonnet uh, on each corner, you'll see they've got these sort of ridges. They're almost like shoulder pads for the car. Now that's been a long sort of long-term Range Rover styling cue. Uh, and that's just another sort of thing that makes them, you know, sort of a visual link to the previous generations and even now i think you still find them on the on the current ones another thing of course is the range rover lettering on the bonnet again i think that's still pretty much identical even on cars now 25 years later and they're quite an elegant car even though they're quite boxy they just still have quite a degree of class about them they, they're not too big either um, by modern standards they're actually quite small i think a, a range rover evoke probably parked next to it wouldn't actually look all that much smaller another, another feature is these uh, big c pillars here uh, at the back 
one thing to look for if you are buying one, that they don't really suffer at all from uh, rust problems, uh, the P38, because they're made of aluminium, they're all aluminium panels, but they do suffer from galvanic corrosion, which is basically where the paint and, and uh, where the aluminium reacts with the steel, uh, any, you know, fixings and screws, and the paint just flakes and falls off and looks horrible. This one's not too bad, um, but if you're buying one, that's just another thing to keep an eye out for. Well, it's time of the day for the lockdown road test. That is a quick uh, test and tour of my driveway uh, while we can't go anywhere because of this virus. And that's most important, stay at home folks if uh, you're watching this whilst we're still all locked down. Um, nice thing obviously instantly about any four wheel drive is obviously you've got the big high up driving position and in the Range Rover that's no different. Obviously being a diesel, just gotta wait for the little glow plug light to go out before I can start it takes a surprisingly long time compared to modern cars. There we go, we're straight in. Um, they did incidentally do the P38 in a manual uh, gearbox. Uh, there's not that many of them about, particularly if you're watching this in the States. I'm not even sure if they offer that option in the States, but they certainly did it over here. Um, and I, I've, I've never seen one, but I know they do exist. Um, most, the vast majority are automatic, like the car you see here. Um, and they're just a really nice car to drive. I mean, I have to say, this is the diesel, as I've mentioned, it is horrendously slow. Um, I mean, even by, you know, old car standards, even when these were new, they were appallingly slow. And by modern standards, they've just got worse. Um, but it, they're very smooth, they're comfortable, and, and to be honest, you just don't feel the need to, to rush with them. Uh, they just drive nicely. They're, they're very smooth, very comfortable. Uh, the seats are well padded uh, and, and you just don't feel in a need to rush and I've had newer Range Rovers and I think they've lost some of that that sort of wafty feeling you know they're, they're obviously quite quick um, and, and I, what I like about the P38 even the, the petrol ones they just have a nice sort of refined feeling to them well my review wouldn't be complete without uh, an engine start so uh, even though this is the uh, diesel, let's have a go and just start it up. Being the diesel, you do, of course, have to wait for the little uh, glow plug light there to go out. And for some reason, the wipers are on as well. Mmm, listen to that. The sound of a, a derv engine. Still, sounds quite purposeful. So, there are several other things to watch for on these. Um, all P38s came from the factory with air suspension, um, which means you have air airbags effectively on all four corners, and that is what's keeping the car upright. And it's controlled by this system here that you see with the buttons here, so you can actually control the ride height. Um, good idea in practice, uh, but, in, well, sorry, a good idea in principle rather, but in practice they are a bit unreliable. Uh, I have to say this car is all working fine, it's, uh, it's got no problems, um, but a lot of people do remove the air suspension because it can be very troublesome and expensive to put right. So air suspension issues aside, uh, there are also other things to look for, in fact many other things with the P38, um, one of which is the climate control. Now Again, surprisingly, this one actually all works beautifully and even the air conditioning is nice and cold. But most of these you see, they lose the pixels, so the display goes. And you also can get a little book symbol there, which means it's got horrible problems with the ventilation system. Again, all of which can be very costly uh, to put right. Now, notwithstanding air suspension and uh, the climate control, they can also suffer all manner of electronic problems with something called the body control module, uh, which controls various other functions such as the windows and the sunroof. Uh, they get immobiliser problems and the P38, the 4.6 that I uh, spoke about earlier, that uh, very car I bought with an immobiliser problem. So they do suffer issues uh, and again that's part of the reasoning why I suggested buying a good one to start off with. So there we have it, uh, that's the P38 Range Rover. Uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, I hope to catch you all soon. Bye bye.